I've dealt with it, man. Where I'm from, we always talk about how hard it is. There's no opportunities. But where I was, when I was coming up, I seen opportunities all around me. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Truth Life Podcast. I'm your host, Tyron Johnson, professional basketball player in France. If you are new to the channel, welcome. We're with our fourth season. The last season was our financial literacy season, where we've done 10 episodes where we just focused strictly on financial literacy. Now, this is not a finance podcast, but I felt like it was an important topic that kept coming up amongst the people that's following me, amongst the people that's commenting and interacting with this podcast. So I wanted to make sure that I put something out that would be of value to help them because if I'd have known most of these things, I'll be in a way better situation than I am today. And this podcast, Truth Life, stands for Take Respect and Tell Freedom. And one of the factors where to get freedom is to get your money in order. So I really want to focus on that. But we're done with that. We're back with the self-development. We're going to do everything that we got to do to make sure that we can take care of ourselves so that we can live the life that we always wanted to live. And that's what this podcast is about. Today is episode 80. Um, we're 80 episodes in. And man, I'm so excited to, to be consistent, to be rocking with you guys. Today's topic is a very interesting one. Something that I have to fight my whole life because where I'm from, I'm from the Bible Belt, I'm from the South, I'm from a place that was riddled in slavery, oppression, I'm from South Louisiana. In my community alone, there's three plantations, three slave plantations. Along in my vicinity, in the proximity of where I'm from, there's about eight or nine. So the descendants of those slaves are us. Those slaves never really migrated. Slavery was ended, and those people just kind of formed their own little neighborhoods around the town. So this topic was something that I had to focus on a lot because where I'm from, being a victim is 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 really is really easy to to be. So this episode episode eight is about avoiding victim mentality. Let's, let's define what victim mentality is. Uh, I've done some research and I got kind of like a one common answer that victim mentality is an acquired personality trait in which people tend to view themselves as victims. By doing so, they often feel like they lack control over the events in their life. There are a few reasons why people may possess a victim mentality, but to stop playing victim, you have to become aware of it and take ownership of your perspective. The power is indeed in your hands, or should we say your mind? And they outline like five causes of victim mentality. It's betrayed trust, intense emotional pain, past trauma, codependency, and a history of manipulation. Man, that was that that was a good definition of what I think that the victim mentality is. And I've dealt with it, man. Where I'm from, we always talk about how hard it is. There's no opportunities. But where I was, when I was coming up, I seen opportunities all around me. I seen opportunities all around me. My role model coming up was Primetime and Corey Webster. Primetime was my 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 motivation from afar. I didn't know him personally. Corey Webster was about 10 houses down the street. I didn't know Corey personality work. I, I didn't know Co Corey personally coming up, but I watched him, and I watched how he moved. I watched the things he did. I watched how he carried himself, and I mimicked it. When he went to LSU, we went to LSU. When he went to the NFL, we went to the NFL. And just seeing a guy getting it from where we came from like that, it really put a spark in me and be like, oh, I can do it too. So. I was like, there's no excuses. I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm looking at you. I'm looking you out of shape. You're obese. I'm looking at how you spend your time. 
the people that was telling me that it's hard and they're oppressed, they were spending their time underneath trees talking about everything that's going on in the hood, fighting, um, focused on solely on women, getting as much women as possible. But I seen Corey Webster, he was on the levee. He was on the hill, training, walking down the street with strength shoes. I seen him playing multiple sports. I seen him always being respectful, being kind, always competing. So I took that approach instead of the other approach. So you gotta be careful of the people that you're around because those people can be portraying their life on you. They'll fail you, so they're going to put you in a situation where you're gonna be failing. They say that you're a product of the five people that you spend the most time with. But guess what? Those people are not only your friends. Those people could be your mother, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your, your close family. You gotta be careful whenever you're dealing with family because they are the kings of victim mentality. If, especially the family members that hasn't that, that didn't make it, that wasn't successful. Or which would which, 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 what would you define as success? They might be successful in their own right. They got a house, they got a car, they got a steady job. That's the American dream. I'm at the point where I'm saying, bump the American dream. I don't want the American dream. The American dream don't suit me. What suit me is my dreams and my goals. And my dream and my goal is not to get a job and work a nine to five and find a four or five bedroom apartment, I mean house, buy BMW or Mercedes Benz and live in the suburbs. That's not my dream. My dream is to explore this world as much as possible, um, impact people by using the game of basketball, impact people by using my own experiences and contributing to the world, having experiences. That's, that's my dream. So since we understand what the victim mentality is, we got to understand how to take, how to take, how to take care of it. Take charge of your life, right? You got to be aware of limiting beliefs. A lot of our memories and a lot of things that we go through can put us in a place where we start thinking about those things like, man, if this wouldn't have happened to me, then I would be here. If this would have happened to me, then I would have been here. And then we start comparing ourselves. We start looking at somebody else and seeing, well, they're successful. How come I'm not successful like them? All of that's going to put you in a place of being a victim. And all that's going to do is hold you back from being successful. Because you're thinking about everything that's wrong with you. You're not, think, you're not seeing the best parts of you. But you don't see it because you don't sit down. Right? You don't sit down and you don't practice mindfulness. So I try to meditate at least 20 minutes per day. 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at night. Just sit down with my thoughts. Think about my dreams, think about my goals, think about my aspirations, because you can fall into that victim mentality a lot. And what I've learned was a lot of people use racism and oppression to be a victim. Listen, racism and oppression is real. It's been real. It always will be real according to the way humans look like the way humans are going. But most of that is carried out by the, by the majority of people that have power. Everyone is not racist. Everyone is not trying to oppress you. Everyone, the people that, that look like the people that's oppressing might benefit from it, but what I've learned to find out that is there's going to be ignorant people in all groups. There's going to be radical Muslims. There's going to be radical Christians. There's going to be radical um, culture groups. But at the core, for the most part, most people are good people. But the radical people normally have the power. The Muslims that are radical, they normally have the gun power. They normally have the power to assemble large groups and create chaos in the world. The old white men that have ran the world normally have power with money and resources. They actually have no resources, but they steal resources and they pay. I'm not going to get into that. But normally those guys have had the power for a couple of hundred years, right? So they abuse it. But the common average white person is not racist and they're not trying to abuse that. That's me traveling around the world. You might have a different opinion, but I, I don't. Because living around the world, I found that 
skin color is not really a concern when it comes to these people. It's money. Money is the driving factor. Money is the driving factor to racism and oppression. These people don't care what color your skin is. They'll still make money with you. You got black people making millions of dollars. Billions of dollars. We get into the Kanye's in them. So it ain't about your skin color. They're about money. They want their generations to live a better life than they did. They're focusing on themselves. And I think that people that look like me, if we would focus on ourselves and our generations and our families, we'll be in a better place. We don't like our job, but we're working for it. We don't like our environment, but we choose to live there. I tell guys all the time, man, you don't got to sell dope. If you want to live like a king, move to Mexico. Take you 50, 60 grand, save it up for about five years, get 50, 60 grand, and move to Mexico. You live like a king. You can move to Argentina, places where it's not so expensive to live. If you want to live like a king, whatever that means. But you can't be a victim around me. So what's holding you back? I tell you, I tell you what's holding you back and why you playing a victim. Dopamine. Social media, your social circle, and your daily habits. We're addicted to so much things in this world that we don't realize that we're addicted to them because they don't do direct damage to our physical appearance. If you're a cokehead, that's going to show. If you're a crackhead, that's going to show. If you smoke marijuana, it's going to show. If you drink alcohol, you're going to see the physical effects. But whenever you scroll on social media for six hours per day, that don't show in physical appearance. That's showing productivity. Whenever you're hanging around people that just doesn't serve you in a way that's going to make you better, that doesn't show in physical appearance, but that shows in productivity. Whenever your daily habits are you just on the couch, social media, social friends, YouTubing, um, other addictions like porn, whenever you're just doing those things all day, every day, it don't necessarily show in physical appearance, but it shows in productivity. Whenever you're not productive, you, you're most susceptible to, be, to becoming a victim. You start using all these excuses about how this ain't going for you and how you don't have the opportunity to do this. You have a lot of opportunity. You have the same 24 hours as, as everyone else in this world, but you're consumed with, with dopamine. That, dopamine. The dopamine is running your life. When I tell you your screen time is about nine hours a day, and you think that's normal to be looking at a screen for nine hours a day, that's crazy. You know what you could do with those nine hours? In five days, that's 45 hours that you could have been spending building, learning, connecting. That's what you could have been doing in those nine hours. But you'll waste those 45 hours and then whenever you're trying to get whatever you're trying to get doesn't work, you'll say, oh, well, I don't have no opportunities. You got opportunities all week. You got opportunities all week. I hear guys say, coach don't give me the ball. Or team, the teammate, my teammates don't give me the ball. I hear guys say, the GM, they're trying to cut me. I hear guys say, this, does, this system doesn't fit me. Man, nobody care about that, man. I don't think no coach is going to deliberately try to not have you successful. You're not successful. The coach not successful. I don't think no GM is deliberately going to try to be not going to try to hold you back. You not successful. He not successful. I don't hear no, no coaches trying to hold Mike James back or, or Shane Larkin back. I'm, th I'm talking about European guys. I don't hear nobody trying to hold Kevin Durant back. 
If you ain't getting the ball, go get it. Nobody ain't telling you that part. If you ain't getting the ball in the offense, go get it. I'm talking to basketball players right now because this podcast, we focus on everybody, but I also like to to, to tap into like guys, a lot of basketball players watch this. You can get offensive rebounds. You can run the court in transition. You can set good screens. Go get the ball. Make it obvious. Post up. You can post up hard. You can cut to get open. You see Steph Curry moving the whole time. Are you moving like Steph? Are you moving like Durant? Trying to get the ball. Are you moving like LeBron? No. Because you ain't in shape. If you was in shape, you'd be to get the ball more. If you've been studying, you'd be to get the ball more. How much hours you watch a week? How much hours of basketball you watch a week? How much extra work you put in a week? How much time you spending on your body a week? How much you watching your nutrition? How much weed you smoking? How much alcohol you drinking? Those guys got control over that. Do you? Ah, nah. You just, I'm overseas, so, you know, I can take some time off and by myself. You know, I'm not going to the NBA. I'm not going to the EuroLeague. So, you know, I'm just going to get by. Victim Olympics. Then don't tell me whenever it gets tough. Don't tell me that it's tough for you. Don't tell me that it's their fault. It's not your fault. It's your fault. I can't take the victim Olympics, man. I can't take I can't take people that complain. Because we got the power to control everything. You got 24 hours in a day. You choose on how you spend it. I don't care if you married. I don't care if you got kids. I don't care if you got your homeboy living with you. There ain't no excuses. You got 24 hours. I'm up every day at 6 a.m. studying, learning, trying to get better. Because I'm, 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 I've made it to a point to where I'm comfortable in life, but I still want more. When I stop wanting more, that's when I'm gonna retire. But I ain't playing victim. I ain't playing victim. I ain't saying, yo, I've been dominating France for about five years and I ain't getting the contracts I want. I ain't playing victim. Now I'm gonna just keep on doing what I do and let everything else fall fall in place. So now we got to figure out how to overcome being a victim. Don't be a victim. (laughs) Get resources. I generally think that dopamine is what's holding most people back. You focusing on things that don't matter. If you focus on contributing, leaving an impact, and being of use, you'll be okay. To go back to guys that's playing basketball overseas, I really think a lot of you guys are really struggling because of porn. We're by ourselves all day, every day. We're in foreign countries. A lot of us don't speak the language. A lot of you guys cut on porn and spend hours, and you become addicted to this. You're losing energy. You're losing focus. That shit just puts you in a bad spirit. I've been there. Nothing good feel not you feel nothing whenever you have no control over that, nothing about that feels good. Put the porn down, man. Put the porn down and start having some purpose. Start scheduling your days. Start setting some goals. Start setting some priorities. Once you do that, you're living with a purpose. One way I avoid the vic- the victim mentality is by acting like I'm already where I want to be. I get up, I get dressed. I make sure that I'm well-groomed. I make sure that I'm smelling good. I make sure that my hygiene is up. I make sure I'm well-studied. In my mind, you see me as Tyron Johnson, but in my mind, I'm Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm LeBron James in my mind. How How would they act? How would they come up? Let me go clean my car. I ain't driving a Mini. I ain't driving a Mini Countryman. I'm driving a Lambo. No, I'm not in this, this apartment. I'm in a penthouse, downtown, Brickell, Miami. That's where I'm at. In my brain, I'm already there. So when I get there, I'm not impressed. I'm controlling this. I ain't let nobody make me no victim. You ain't finna tell me, oh, 
it's hard. Of course it's hard. You're trying to do a job that 1% of the world is doing. Of course it's hard. You're trying to be a part of the 1%. Hell yeah, it's hard. Of course it's hard. You're trying to be married. You know how hard it is to find love today? Women delusion. Men don't take accountability. You got all these dating apps. Porn is easy, accessible. People don't even know how to speak to people no more. You don't even know how to approach women no more. Women don't even know how to take appro men approaching them. Everyone just in their own little bubble because we're shackled by these homes. People ain't even getting outside and getting light. One of the biggest deficiencies going around the world is vitamin D because people are not going outside no more. We're not doing normal human things. We're becoming robots. But we can't be a robot because we are humans. And whenever you're living like a robot, a lot of time robots don't have accountability. And whenever you're being a victim, most of the time it's because you're not taking accountability. There's no excuses, man. There's no excuses that we're making in 2022. It's about to be a new year. We ain't making no excuses. We're going to avoid being a victim. We ain't going through that shit. I didn't even put no advertisement in this in this episode because I'm serious about that. We can't be a victim. That's all I got. I just want you guys to know that life is short, but it's also long. Take advantage of every day. Take advantage of every hour. If you sleep, your sleep got to be lit. If you napping, your nap got to be lit. If you working out, your workout got to be lit. If you eating, your food got to be lit. You spending time with your friends, that moment got to be lit. You creating, that creation got to be lit. Everything got to be lit. Every day can be lit. That's how you live a truth life. I'm going to leave y'all like I leave y'all every time. Every day, make them pay so that one day you can live a truth life.